visual effects on this movie are, are pretty huge. There's as many shots as you would expect to find in like a sci-fi aliens attacking the earth kind of a movie. There's a lot of shots that you see in the movie that the average person or even an effects person wouldn't know would be an effect. The method that we're using is we're going to Detroit, say we filmed the Detroit Grand Prix. We go to Chicago, we film the Chicago Grand Prix. So what we film with the 12 and 13 cameras that we're shooting these races with doesn't necessarily match the action that we have scripted for our actors and for our story. So what we then need to do is to go back, look at the footage we shot, then add in computer-generated cars to match what our actors need to do. Back to full speed, fly in pursuit of Brandenburg. He's right there. He tries him in every corner. What we get by doing that is the production value of shooting the Chicago Grand Prix with the hundreds of thousands of people and all the cars, but then we get the story points that we need by putting computer-generated cars on the track. A lot of the elements we would mix, like, like the car might be real, but a tire flying off of it might be created digitally. We're to a rain race, we have to add rain. Crashes we need to augment. A lot of times there'd be wires and, and cameras all over the shot when they shot it, and then we would have to go in and take all those out, create like a, a new background that doesn't have that in it, and then put the car back over it. My first meeting with Randy, we both had the idea that we wanted to do visual effects that had never been done before. I'm really hoping to blow the audience away in terms of the experience by using digital technology. We can really put the audience there in the driver's seat, and whether it's a racing uh, sequence or a crash sequence, I want the audience to to get that idea of what it really is like and use, use all the tricks that are available now in a different way than ever before. The pit fire shot, the famous pit fire shot, we probably spent about two months working on this shot. It's a very difficult and adventurous kind of a, a shot. A lot of shots in a lot of movies never get seen. That's just the reality of production. But at least on this one, we're lucky enough to have it added on the DVD. It was supposed to fall in the movie in a sequence that's kind of a pit stop montage where you had a lot of shots of like cars being fueled up, tires being changed, in the middle of like the final race where everybody's trying to go as fast as possible and all of a sudden this car catches on fire and there's this huge gas cloud explosion and we do this camera move that sort of moves around the car as the explosion grows in super slow-mo. What they did was they set up 13 motion picture cameras around the subject. So you'd have a little over a semicircle of cameras pointing at the car while it exploded. If you just align the 13 different cameras and play them one after the other, it would jump 30 degrees in space. It wouldn't create a, a smooth move. So we decided that the best way to create the smoothness was to create virtual camera frames in between the 13 actual frames. So we took the A camera and the B camera, and then we did a morph from A to B so that the perspective shifts smoothly from one camera angle to the next. We had like seven frame morphs between each of the cameras. So we're at the first frame and the end frame of those seven frames would be true, real frames that came out of the cameras. And then the five frames in between would be virtual cameras or views that were invented by the process of morphing. Most simply, a morph is a transition from one image to another. The first morphs that I remember seeing were like in the Michael Jackson video and some of those videos where you morphed from one face to another and it was a smooth, continuous transition where all of a sudden it's someone's different face. Uh, in this case, we were using the morphing of transitioning from one camera angle to another camera angle and a nice smooth transition from one to the other. Here's camera J and now here is camera K and you can see there's quite a bit of difference between these two angles and what our goal is is to make a series of in-between steps that correspond to the views that would be between those two cameras. So the first task that we do is we go through frame by frame and we outline every important element that we want to morph from one to the other. The blue outline is the B-roll, the destination, and the red outline is the A roll or the source. The resultant morph is this character that's, that's just right in between. Here we're actually showing both of the images superimposed over each other. 
So you can see here is the, the helmet for the one guy on the B-roll and the same helmet on the A-roll, and they're in a different place. And we tie those together with correspondence points. We look for landmarks on each shape and connect them to the same landmarks on the shape on the B-roll. It's called joining. We join the shapes together. And then we're pretty much ready to go. We set a few controls as far as how we want to exercise the morph. A shot like this has, uh, you know, probably 50 to 100 different elements that all go together to make the one shot you see on the screen. This car here was just a dummy car that was built for this, for this effect so they could set it on fire multiple times and not, not actually destroy the car. Because we, we used this dummy car, we had to create a, uh, a real car in, in CG. This is the computer-generated car that was created to replace the dummy car in the explosion pass. It's very smooth, and they were able to recreate the textures and the reflections of all the surfaces, and we used the actual car to get all the, the graphics and the details off of it. We had more elements to add that were shot separately, so we had lots and lots of different pieces of film that we had to put together to make this shot. I probably have over 100 gigabytes of information of different passes and different pieces. Every night for the past month, we've had almost all the computers in the room crunching away on making elements for the shot. We really had a sense that we were doing something new during the whole time of doing this. I feel very lucky that I got to be involved with it. There's something weird and magical about it, just seeing something that you could not see any other way. So two months of work for about nine seconds of film time. <laughs> We're doing camera testing today, and uh, things seem to be working out really good. We're mounting a row vision camera, which is a gyroscope 2C camera. It can rotate 360 degrees. You can start on Stallone, and you think uh, one of the actors, and you think that you're on a close-up. All of a sudden, the camera pans around, and you're in the race. And it's a fairly new device that, that's never been really used on a race car before. And that camera is filming something that's never been filmed before. Race cars racing at 150 miles an hour shooting each other. Uh, I think we're gonna get some uh, very, very amazing shots on this, and uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that the vibration at 150 miles an hour won't affect uh, the rig that we've got on there. If you take it a step further, what we're, we're going to do is take some of these sequences that involve car crashes and do them like you've never seen them before. Once we started to come up with the ideas of how to do some of these crashes, you know, I realized we've, it's never been done before. So it involved another level of figuring out how to, how to pull this stuff off. I think one of the most successful sequences for me is the um, Max Pappas crash. Head on into that car. Max Pappas is airborne. We shot a special effect shot of towing one car into another. It uh, hits the front of the car and launches. And it launched actually quite a bit further than we thought it would, but uh, it looked pretty spectacular. Initially, we were just going to add rain to the shots and put a little grandstand in. But as we got into it, it became, I think, more interesting to see more people. So it turned out that that whole sequence, which I think it's about 12 to 15 shots, were all worked on in some way. We basically added a big sea of people behind uh, the car as it's crashed uh, from all the different angles. As we were working editorially, it was always thought that it'd be nice to have the driver's POV that's about to crash. And it was something we didn't shoot, so we went in and created that digitally and took one background we had and just added a CG car, the driver's POV going right to it. That was another thing that added a lot of life to it because you, you really sort of got what the driver's experience. I think the total number of shots we actually did for the movie were 690. I worked 15 hour days, seven days a week, including one shift that was 36 hours long. <laughs> Every step of the way was kind of an exciting new breakthrough. It was a good experience and we were able to pull it off.